Do you want to learn Arabic and Islamic sciences with distinguished teachers accompanied with the best brotherhood and sisterhood in London? Enroll now on site at Medina College or study online on the portal for £10 a month at mclportal.com Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Thirty hadith on the fiqh of fasting This hadith is an Aisha radiallahu anha Anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal Man mata wa alayhi siyam sama anhu wa liyuhu This hadith says that the Prophet said, whoever dies and owes any fasts, then his wali fasts for him on his behalf. وأخرجه أبو داود وقال هذا في النذر خاصة وهو قول أحمد بن حنبل. Then Abu Dawood who uh, mentions this hadith as well, uh, also or who uh, records this hadith in his Sunan says and adds a ta'liq or note that this is in the fast which is based upon the oath only and also that this is the statement of Ahmed ibn Hanbal uh, as is one on Abu Dawood who is the muhaddith who has sunan Abu Dawood he was one of the students of Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal and he's got there's a book called Masail uh, uh, Ahmed ibn Hanbal and that's uh, Abu Dawood one of the one of the students uh, this hadith generally speaking, uh, shows that the the yun, which are the debts which are owed by the deceased, they should be paid and they should be fulfilled. And these debts are twofold, whether they are debts owed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of zakat, for example, and siyam, that are days that needed to be made up, or they are debts that are owed to people i.e. a person borrowed money and he hasn't paid it back then he has a debt on his neck and has to be paid back if when he dies by his uh, heir or his inheritors uh, so and the hadith says as well the person that uh, has the responsibility first and foremost to do that are the inheritors of the deceased which is why the messenger of Allah sallallahu said man mata wa alayhi siyam that his wali has to uh, take or fast in that person's behalf. Uh, so this is um, the hadith. What do you benefit from this hadith? From the apparentness of the hadith, it shows the obligation of making up fasts on the deceased. And it doesn't specify, so it doesn't. So, if, uh, irrespective of whether the fast was an oath, or whether the fast was something which was obligatory, aslan, i.e., based upon the Sharia, like the fast in the month of Ramadan and making up those fasts, or the kafara fast. Uh, and this is in opposition and con contrast to what Abu Dawood mentions. Um, uh, where he limits and specifies this hadith only to fasts which are based upon taking an oath uh, that a person has to fulfill. Uh, Ibn Daqiq al Eid he mentions that this uh, hadith uh, shows that. Add, add any other fast which is ilhaq, i.e. that this hadith shows what? This hadith it shows the obligation of making up fast as a debt, i.e. that it's something that you owe, you have to make it up. Uh, with regards to anything else from the obligations which are owed that should be made up, it's based upon al qiyas, which is analogy. You have a asul, you have a far, or min, you have the basis, you have the extension of the original issue that you've been discussing of the ruling of the illa uh, and all of them are debts i.e. it was an obligation to do it so it's an obligation to make it up also the benefits of this hadith specifically it shows who's the person that has to take up this responsibility of fasting uh, i.e. it's the inheritors who actually benefit from what the deceased left behind it's on them to do it uh, 
and from the obligations which is upon them to fulfill is, ob is fulfilling the debts which the person owed. Now this issue of fasting on behalf of somebody else when they passed away, the scholars have difference of opinion concerning it. Uh, I.e. a person passes away and he has fast to make up from Ramadan because he was either travelling or he was ill at the time and he didn't make them up before the next Ramadan or he passed away before the next Ramadan came or before he was able to make them up, excuse me. So the scholars differ on three opinions. Number one, he doesn't make it up on behalf of the deceased, full stop. Whether it's a fast for a vow or it's a, which is an obligation or it's a fast due to days missed in Ramadan. And this is a view of Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, as well as Imam Shafi'i in his latest madhab. And the second view is that you make up the fast if it is a fast of another, a vow, and not one which is making up days from Ramadan, for example. And this is a view or the madhab of Imam Ahmed and other than him of the uh, Salaf. And this view was supported and given uh, also uh, uh, strengthened by Ibn al Qayyim. The third view is that you fast on the deceased if he has days to make up. And you fast whether it's a obligatory fast, like making up days from Ramadan, or whether it's a fast based upon another. So it adds, it makes it more broad than the second view. And this is a statement of Abi Thawr and the people of Hadith, Ibn Hazm also um, uh, says this is a correct opinion uh, and he refutes all of the, uh, the opinions that go against this opinion uh, also this is a view of Imam Shafi'i Fil Qadim I what does it mean Fil Qadim or Fil Jadid Imam Shafi'i has two uh, madhab the madhab of Imam Shafi'i before he went to Misr and the madhab of Imam Shafi'i after he went to Misr um, also, this opinion is of opinion uh, 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 preferred by Shaykh Abdul Rahman al Sa'di, the teacher of Shaykh Uthaymin, and Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah as well. And it applies to every single debt which is upon the deceased that he should pay it back, whether it's a debt which is due to the cre uh, owed to the creation in terms of money borrowed, or whether it's a debt which he obliges upon himself, like an oath, or a debt which is an obligation due to the Sharia. This is the mas'ala of man sama or man kana alayhi siyam fa sama anahu waliyuhu. Whoever has fast to make up, then his wali uh, fasts on his behalf. Uh, there's a fa'idah or last point to mention uh, without going into the intricacies and the details of the evidence for and against. Uh, when, a per when we say that the wali has to make up the fast, uh, this is not that it's an obligation for him to make up, but that it's mustahab for majority of the scholars, except for the zahiriyah that say that it's an obligation for him to make it up. So they say it's recommended for him to make it up, not that it's an obligation to make it up. Uh, uh, and the, the ahnaf, they say that it's an obligation only if he left wealth behind. Otherwise, it's recommended. If he had wealth behind that he left behind, then it's an obligation. If he didn't leave wealth behind, I to be able to make it up, lose a day of work and all this other stuff as a result of it or whatever, then it's not an obligation. And it's valid if somebody else fasts on behalf of that person. It doesn't have to be the inheritors. That's the issue. Man kana alayhi siyam sam anhu waliyuhu. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa sallam alaykum wa rahmatullah.